Wow, the new looping action is finally here. This is one of the, if not the most requested updates to SmartSuite automations. And in this video, I will explain what looping action can do and show two detailed use cases for it. So be sure you watch till the very end. Hi, my name is Artem, I'm a product manager at SmartSuite and I have been with the company for five years. And if there's one thing I've learned is this, you gotta set up your SmartSuite workspace before anything else. You'll find the link below. So what is looping? Looping lets you run one or several actions in a cycle by iterating through a selected source. And the source can be the result of find the records action or a response from a webhook. Here's a simple example. If you are searching for orders that were shipped today, that list becomes your source. If you then send emails to each other's contact person and update each other's status, you are using a loop. And this brings us to use case number one. Let's see how we can set it up. And of course, we'll start with the trigger. In the real life, I would have used something like at a scheduled time daily. But for the sake of this demo, I will use a simple flag when run loop becomes yes. Next, we will add the find records action. It searches for orders that meet two conditions. Status is shipped and date shipped is today. And we have to make sure that this find returns multiple records. Now comes the looping action. First, we define the source for the loop. And in this case, it's the output of the find orders action. And we can give it a custom name, let's say process shipped orders. You will see that the new looping group has just appeared and now we can configure what happens inside the loop. So step one, send email. Who are we sending it to? Well, it needs to go to the contact person of each order. And to get this value, we need to use the new current item option. And current item in this context represents the order that we are currently looping through. Other fields of the email follow the same pattern, so we can move on. Next step is update order status. But which order are we going to update? Well, it's the one that we are currently looping through. That's why, and it's important, the current item option becomes available as a target for the update record action. Now we'll just set the desired status value and we are done. Now let's run it by switching the flag to yes and see what happens. Well, first of all, in the run history, we can see that all actions ran successfully. Great. Let's check the mailbox. Since my email address was linked to all five test orders, I received five emails, one per each order. Now we're back to the grid view, and we can confirm that all five orders now show the updated status value. Let's move on to the second use case, which is a little more advanced. We're going to run a loop and create order items for a sales order. And the workflow starts when I pick the products that I want to include in the order. And then the looping action will create other items for each of those products. Let's automate it. The trigger actually stays the same when run a loop flag becomes yes. And now, since I need order item for each linked product, the first step is to generate a list of those products. And to do it, I will create a find records action in the products table. And I'll be looking for products that match those that have been linked to my order. And remember, this find must return multiple records. Now, the result of this find can act as the source for the loop. Let's call it create order items. Now, for every product that I found, I will create a record in the order items table. And each order item needs to be linked to the triggering order, of course, and also to the product that we are currently looping through. That's why I'm selecting product from the current item option. All right, so let's say I want these three products to be included in the order. So I will trigger the loop. And there you go. Three order items have been created. Each is linked to the correct order and to the correct product. And as a self-check, we can see that the formula field on the order level shows the right total from all the other items we have just created. And this concludes the second use case, but here's a little teaser for those of you who are still watching. 
We are already working on parts 2 and 3 for this video, where we will be covering the use of webhooks as a source for the loop, and also creating projects from templates with automatic dependencies between tasks. So be sure you are subscribed, and I will see you in the next one. Cheers!